Hey everyone! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a guest. I should be behaving myself. Sorry. Never. <laughs> and in front of me? No. 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 So we're off to a growling start. Hi everyone, and welcome. It is Friday, which means it is time for another paint and slate. And as you can tell from um, the pictures above me, uh, we have a special guest with us today. We have Nora with us because this week we've had something pretty cool happen. Lauren, what's what's been the big to do this week for Idol Champions? Well, Nora, you've got a champion in the game, don't you? That I do! Ah! I'm so excited! Yay! <laughs> there she is! Yes. Nahara there's... is now oh, in Feywild Nahara, Yay. which I freaking love because Seja is there. Yeah. I'm very excited. Oh my god. That oh, the, the Idol Champions team are there have they have been so freaking delightful to Aww. work with and just just wonderful, wonderful humans. I I was telling V that I I I, I got teary eyed when I saw Nahara in action and saw the artwork and it went live and I'm like, oh my god, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. It's yeah, good. and we're excited to have unlocked her. The event started Wednesday and yeah. it's going through uh, all of next week. So you can get Nahara in game right now, right now, yeah. right now. Yeah. And then uh, while you are gearing her up and grabbing chests and getting all the, the fun gear for her, hang out with us as we're going to be painting a chimera, a chimera, chimera, chimera. chimera. Ky Something with three heads. Go yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So. And we're so happy that you could join us for it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Oh my I'm God. very excited. I am too. I mean, I've had a chance to paint with both of you and knowing that I'm going to get to paint with both of you at the same time, I'm a happy camper. Uh, but yes, we are. We have this fantastic opportunity to work with WizKids. They sent our way the lovely Chimera paint kit. Now, if you haven't seen these kits yet, they actually come in these lovely little boxes, which you can see right behind me. Yeah. Uh, and in those boxes is pretty much everything you're going to want slash need. Um, although you kind of pull in a couple extra things when I do this, just because there's a few things that make it just ever so slightly easier on you. So when I've, you get this kit, I'm going to interrupt you for one second before you launch into all that uh -oh. stuff, because I did forget two things what because I, because you know, I'm a professional and that's what I do. Uh, first off, if you are in the chat, we do have Martin with us today as a moderator. Say hi to Martin. Martin is awesome. Uh, it is Canada Day, so a lot of our Canadian friends, hey, go. happy Canada Day. Yes. And finally, if you do have a question for us about Idol Champions, um, you can ask questions about Black Dice Society, but I, I'm sure our guests will reserve the right to say no comment um, or anything else. Go ahead and put those yeah. in chat with questions, big <laughs> capital letters before your question. Martin will grab those, stick those in a backstage document so that I can pull those up later when I am not hardcore trying to get a detail done on yeah. this thing. And now that I've interrupted you, <laughs> okay. V, please continue. Thank you. So when you get this, the kit has everything you need inside of it. Um, you'll, will, you will see that we're bringing in a couple of extra things just because I want to make it easier on us in general. Uh, but when you get the kit, 
These little paint pots are actually all attached together in a strip and they're covered in plastic. Shake those up, take the plastic off, and then for your own sake, I find it easier to snip them apart so they become independent little paint pots like that. Uh, this becomes your palette. You can use this for mixing and thinning, etc., etc. It also comes with an adorable little water holder like so with a lid um so i'll put my water that i use for thinning into this one and i'm a creature habit i have my big old rinse pot next to me off to the side uh so you don't necessarily need a paper plate if you don't want to uh but if you want to use your paper plate for mixing paints and stuff or thinning paints you can do that and you also get two brushes in this kit you get the multi-purpose brush which is a brown brush and you also get a fine detail brush, another round brush, but this one is slightly smaller. However, what I'm adding into the mix is a number two or a number three round and a flat dry brush. I'm using the dry brush from Redgrass Games, which they title dry in case there's any confusion. Uh, so these two are extras that I'm bringing into the instructions for this particular miniature. And speaking of miniature, let's look at this monster, shall we? So we have the Chimera, which for so those detailed. of you, I know, right? This is a beautifully detailed mini. I mean, look at the wings, everyone. <laughs> texture. So you have the texture in the wings for the dragon part. You have the fantastic fur detail for the lion and the hide in the back for the goat. You see all that great texture going on. And even in the dragon tail, you have scales Ooh. going on and these lovely ridges on the fin that runs along the back of the tail. So lots of fun details to play with. And if you're nice. not familiar with a chimera, it's basically three monsters all mixed together. So you have a dragon, a lion, and a goat. Uh, so we're going to get to painting this very soon. However, along with this, there is a base. Now the base will be in the bottom of the blister. Now the base can come out together on its own very easily if you are careful popping it out and it will look like this. However, if you oops a daisied and push it a little bit too hard, you can uh, still work with this if that happens. <laughs> um, I actually nudged mine apart because quite frankly, I find it a lot easier to paint the base and then put the flight stand back in after the fact. So if you have pulled this out and this happened, that's okay. If you pulled that out and it didn't happen and you managed to get it out so that it was, hold on, I gotta line up the lock on this properly. So it actually came out as one piece, which again, there we go. If it came out like this, that's fine. You can gently wiggle it. Do not put massive pressure on this or you will crack the stand. You can wiggle it and it'll start to give way. You can also heat the base a little bit with a hairdryer and that'll get the plastic to loosen up enough so you can pop that mm. out too if you wanna do that. So if you did this by accident, it's okay. Happy little Don't accident. Worry. Exactly, yeah. it's a happy little accident. If you wanna make this happen, hair dryer this sucker and gently wiggle, okay? <laughs> Sounds good. I'm, I'm encouraging people to break their minis and we haven't even started painting yet. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> all right. That all being said, are you girls ready to get going on this one? Absolutely. Heck yes. Okay, so I wanna start first, speaking of the base, let's get the base coat on the base, no pun intended. We're gonna start with green gray. And again, you have these lovely little pots and they all come with their names and it's all Vallejo. Uh. So carefully, when you go to open this, lift to the one side like that, okay? And then you can open up the paint pot. You may find, you might have to do a little bit of mixing and you'll know you need to do mixing if you see the pigment sort of floating in a mix of oils. That's mm. easy enough to fix. So if you want to take a paintbrush, I have this little uh, uh, purpose swizzle stick that I'm gonna use. Nice. So I'm just I gonna brought, mix this. Yeah. I brought um toothpicks. Perfect. Oh yeah. For that. Toothpicks work well. Um, cotton buds also work well if you wanna do that. That is totally up to you. I'm gonna move to my number three and just use that to kind of pull some of this excess paint off of my mix. Mixer, I should say. And then with the paint that is already on my number three, I'm gonna scrape a little bit away because you don't wanna have a loaded paintbrush like that. I'm just gonna go in and paint the base with green gray. Now we're going straight from the pot. We don't have to dilute it. We don't have to dilute this one because Sweet. this was a runny enough texture. If it was more of a toothpaste type of texture of paint, or if you find that yours is like toothpaste, then yes, you will need to thin it. Mine was that lovely consistency of good maple syrup. Mm. So I, I feel sad that we didn't have um, 
griddle champions before us I because know. being able to talk about good maple syrup and pancakes mm. and waffles and like it's a whole Friday thing. Yum. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start on one side, getting this going. And it's just a base coat. So you want to make sure you get this into those nooks and crannies because you want this deeper set. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of running this along that lip that you see with the base off. This is the base off option for the flight base. And just kind of doing that, but I'm not getting a whole bunch of paint in the center point down here. I want to keep that open for the super glue. So just be careful and how much paint you get into the, the well, essentially. And even though it's just the base, mm -hmm. I stuck mine on my pill bottle holder, yeah, uh, partially to make too. it a little easier and partially to have something to put the, the uh, whoopsie part of the base in <laughs> there, which well, I totally did idea. on purpose. Yes, it was fully intentional and utterly convenient and a wise choice. <laughs> Absolutely. As opposed to my paint accident, which was oh. like, I got black. I'm not too proud to say it. I got black paint all over my nails, I mean, <laughs> like I <know>. trying to <laughs> open up until I figured out the, like the correct way to open those things. Yeah. They're, they're a feisty little paint pot sometimes. So I am not surprised. But you know what? They're water-based. So yes. no Wash big deal. Off. If you ever get this stuff on your clothing and you can get to it right away, rubbing alcohol, at least 70%, just use it to blot the paint up and out of your clothing. Hmm. It does work. I have saved many a shirt that way. <laughs> Just an FYI for everyone. Oh, yeah. yeah. And hey, um, I also spilled an entire bottle of Null Oil all over my desk on camera. <laughs> so you know what? It's it's all good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yep. I have. Okay. If we're going to be sharing like horror stories of what has happened. <laughs> um, I haven't introduced you all to flocking yet. <sighs> You've Ooh. mentioned it, but you have not, I we have, have not mentioned flocked. No. Do you tell. So uh, flocking is this wonderful kind of grassy kind of, you know, can also be like leaf like looking uh, stuff that you can put onto your bases and everything. And they come in bottles, oftentimes shaker bottles. So if you're doing terrain, you can shake the flocking texture onto the surface of your terrain to make it look more like a grassy area or what have you. I have um, had the lovely experience of using oh, no. one of these flock bottles and I went to reach to get something and oops, a daisy knocked over the flock bottle and flocking went everywhere. Oh, and this geez. stuff is light as feathers. So you move and this stuff is just floating <laughs> around you and you're finding it. It's not as bad as glitter. Because I was about to oh, say, okay, not that as sounds as like glitter. glitter, but it's glitter's yeah. cousin and it's not as pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So, oh, trust me, like that is absolutely a thing with um, doing mini painting and crafting stuff. There are, there are stories of this went very wrong and it wasn't even planned. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly I'm glad that we haven't had to do flocking yeah, yet. And yeah, here, maybe here. I will consider uh, what I need to remove from this room yeah. when we do flocking because That's I am enough flocking. of a klutz to know that'll happen to me. Yeah, That's same. flocking right there. Just to give you an idea of that grassy looking stuff. That's what it is. Oh, cute. Yeah. yeah. So, let me put you back. <laughs> Harvey in chat says the first time my parents got a flocked Christmas tree I thought that word meant it would have birds in it oh. I was young <laughs> oh, I kind of love that though I mean that totally makes sense yeah right it does absolutely uh, especially if everyone's singing about a partridge in a pear tree and yeah. you're gonna get a flocked tree they, oh, so, they sing about nice. multiple different kinds of birds yeah you would think that they would be in there yeah <laughs> that's a really good point like it's I, a weird song when i was young we had um neighbors next door and they were german and the wife was lovely and she would like speak in german and english and everything like that and at one point she was talking to her kids and she kept saying nine and i had i really like, i could not figure out what's going on like why does she keep saying this number my mother had to explain to me when i got home oh nine means no to which i then followed up with so does 10 mean yes i literally was convinced at five years old well if nine means no then 10 must mean yes because it's a progression right <laughs> <laughs> once again <laughs> makes total sense yeah. right yeah i see the logic mm -hmm. but have you ever had that happen like when you were younger have that type of association i know i, know I, have. I have but i can't <laughs> you were like, yes it's mm -hmm. it's gonna come to me like in the shower or something mm -hmm. or i'll be like right about to fall asleep and i'll wake up like that's yeah that was a thing 
That, that's where you tweet us later, so we know. <laughs> that's yeah. where I, that's where I tweet at you at two a.m. and you know that that's I'll, what I. <laughs> chances are I'll be either up still or up soon. <laughs> I have I have the weird adult version of that, and where I'm enough of a classical musician, and where I'll hear hear a word that corresponds to something like a musical term, mm -hmm. but it's being used in a different context, and I don't get the context because I'm hearing the mm -hmm. musical term. Mm -hmm. That um, that happens. That happens a lot. Way too often. Yeah. But we're moving on to... Now we're going to move on to Dart Vermilion, and we're going to go Ooh. stick with our number two or three. Uh, reason why I'm using a larger brush for this part is because even though the multi-purpose brush is great, it is a smaller brush, and when you go on larger surfaces, you can end up with a streakier paint finish by using a smaller brush on wider surfaces. So for our own sake, it's easier to go to a larger brush because we have the larger brushes. So with dark vermilion, again, open it up carefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mine is pretty mine thick. Mine is pretty, let me see. Mine is looking, mm. mine's mixed, so that's good. But it is also thick. So yes, I am going to be thinning this out, which means I'm going to go to one of these little paint pots, or wells, not the paint pots, one of the paint wells. And I'm going to take a couple scoops of the vermilion on my brush. And use the edge of that well to scrape the excess paint off. I have discovered I've made a mistake and I don't know where my little plastic thingy is. Uh -oh. So I, I, do you have a paper I might... plate? I, I do, but now I don't have the water that was in it and I don't know where it's gone. Did oh you dear. Set it down next to your desk. I, I might have. Um, okay. Hold please. Well, you all keep going okay. and have fun <laughs> and I'm going to find where that water went. That'll work. So what we want to do is you do want to thin this out so it's about mm -hmm. the consistency of maple syrup because this is going to help it get a nice thin coat onto the mini but also float over the texture and not get gunked up in the texture because there's a lot happening here with these wings that you don't want to lose to the paint getting collected into the ridges wells. So um, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use my little water dropper that I have. But just taking clean water. Bless you. Bless. <laughs> Thank you. you. Sneeze like I sneeze. <laughs> I'm going to put a couple drops here and get that mixed together to thin it out. You can take uh, clean water. You can dip your brush, your clean brush into clean water and just sort of drop the water droplets into the paint and thin it that way if you want to. If you're brave, though I don't recommend it, you could theoretically take this paint pot and like carefully pour a couple drops in. Operative word there is carefully. <laughs> that's what, yeah, I put a, I got a little too much water uh -huh. in there, so I had to put yeah. more paint, but yeah. that's okay. It's totally okay. So then we're going to mix this up and then we're going to start working this onto the wings. Now we're going to work on the dragon body parts, which sounds horrible first, um, because red is one of those colors where if you establish that first, it's a lot easier to put other layers of paint over it. If you wait and do the red last and you have an oopsie daisy moment, you could start getting into this back and forth thing that's going to happen. So we're going to do the dragon areas first, and then we'll move into doing the lion and the goat. So I'm going to take this, uh, what is this one? The dark vermilion. And we're going to sort of treat this as a half way point. We're going to start at the top here at the fold where that main talon claw is at the top. And then we're going to feather it down to the midway point. Okay, so basically start up here and bring the paint down. I need to move my light back over. I moved my light so people could actually see the mini and right now it's gonna flare slightly because, you know, white primer. And basically bring it so it's not a perfect edge, but it's more of like a streaky finish towards the midpoint. We're gonna do that across the whole wing, top and bottom of the wing, both wings. And this is the same kind of thing that we did with the mic in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Similar concept. And you can get this red on pretty much all of the wing. You don't have to worry about avoiding the claw part because we'll go okay. back in with black. Black will obliterate the red. That's not an issue. So right now it's just working this paint down the wing and into those nooks and crannies without overloading the brush and with paint. And I'm assuming we're going to do the same thing on the back of this wing? Yep, on the back, on the tops, and on both. All right. And then the challenge becomes holding this without getting red all over myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
That's why I that recommend a- start on one ring, one ring, one wing, front and well, top and bottom, we'll call it. And then okay. by the time you finish that, you should be able to rotate over and hold it like so and get to the other wing and pretty soon be able to handle the one wing. If you try and do side to side, top, top, bottom, bottom, that's where it's going to get tricky to hold. Ah, makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that is a deep groove on the back of this wing. It is. Yeah. Deep thoughts with wings. (laughs) Deep thoughts with lots of red paint. Mm -hmm. So now, Nora, last time we sat and painted, wasn't it the (gasps) uh, zombie owner? It was the slod. Was the oh, wait, slot. no. We did a slot and we did an o- the, the ogre. And okay. I can't remember which one, which one was first. Yeah. So you've painted a couple times and it was always lots of fun. So this yeah. is another one of these paint kits that we're doing together. I love these kits. They're so... I'm... I, I'm not a beginner painter, but I'm definitely not an expert. And I find that like this is very helpful for any level that you're at. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact that the paint and the brushes that the the kits come with, like there's more than enough paint for this one mini and the brushes are definitely useful otherwise. And when, uh, before V came to instruct me one-on-one, I was doing the, those paint night kits. Uh, with with y'all sitting at home doing the mm-hmm. ogre zombie and everything and basically those were my supplies for a while is I just had a couple of brushes from the oh, kits yeah. and lots of little tiny pots of paint and it was fun yep I can mm-hmm. honestly say having done stuff for those kits um, and tutorials and whatnot one of those kits has easily gotten me through at least seven miniatures wow uh, just the paint supplies alone so even though you're, you know, focusing on just this one miniature that comes in the kit, you can very easily uh, buy other minis that sort of have similar paint color schemes and get mileage out of the paints that are left over. And it's, it's a good way to figure out, hey, is this something I want to get into? Uh-huh. Am I just having fun with, you know, this one mini, but it's not really going to be a thing? Do I yeah. uh, now want to buy more of the supplies? Oh, wait, hold on a second. That I can find on the Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions, where you can pick up all of the different, um, well, all of the different, the set of brushes and the set of paints that we uh-huh. recommend if you want to paint with us every single week. Yes. We'd love to have you join us. Yeah. I am required to drink every single time I plug the Discord because I do it uh, very often. <laughs> the first thing I did setting up um, before stream was set my drinking cup far away from my water cup because I have dunked my paintbrush into my beverage mm-hmm. far too many times. <laughs> mm-hmm. I... It just happens. It's a, it's a thing. It happens for, I've done it myself too. I have also in my absent mindedness, um, sipped the rinse water because I grabbed the wrong cup. Ooh, I did that one time and it that wasn't was fun. Not good. Oh. That was good. <laughs> one that's, time. And I, that's all you need. Mm, that's all you need. Mm-hmm. One time you're like, yeah, oh, I, oh. I was like, oh it. yeah, it can happen. I, I have yet to do the dipping or the drinking. I just do a lot of spilling. I'm I'm the person who, I, I don't get it into my mouth. I just get it all over the desk, all over the floor. I have so many paper towels placed down for accidental spillage. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know what's better or worse. I know. I just get so laser focused when I paint, which, part, which is one of the reasons why I like it because it's this weird I feel like mm-hmm. ultra focused, um, and also kind of zone out at the same time. Yeah, it's oh, and sure. and that is such a bad combination when you're not <laughs> when you have multiple uh, cups of various liquids around you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> One of which you imbibe. This is very true. So what I'm doing with this little flap here, I'm just painting that one completely dark vermilion. And that ah, okay. crook of the crook of the elbow, we'll call it. On the underside. On both sides. On the both sides, okay. Yep. So get into the armpits. Yeah, get into that upper portion. The wing pits. Yeah, mm. so just the upper one where the elbow kind of hooks. I'm leaving this one. That one's going to be a different red color. And if you have it kind of going onto this part of the wing, that's okay. That will actually work. But you want the main part of this little flap of 
skin, leather. <laughs> Both? Flesh. Neither? There. Mm -hmm. You want that painted in the dark vermilion. Okay, so that is both sides for me on one wing. But um, but um, I'm gonna do a quick little spot check. And oh, then... I, should, I, I should also be spot checking for spot checking for <laughs> questions like the learning <laughs> writer who wants to know this week's code starts with chim. Could next week's have chimney in it, please? Oh, I mean, I. I was going for chimera, but you know, I could do a chim chimney, chim chimney. We could, we could definitely, <laughs> we could definitely go there. Why not? Uh, Ow. Oh, this tail. Ow. Why, why, why tail? Why you got to poke me so much? Because it is a monster. Yeah. I mean, it's still not as bad as the, um, the Rimeraz. Oh God. The... <laughs> that... Spike and Ouchie is literally their names ended up being, I believe. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> oh yeah. I I was I was getting punctured by that thing. It's now one of my favorite minis. Like it came out really, really well, but at the time mm -hmm. I was I was very annoyed. <laughs> I did not ask to be attacked during this process. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. This but my tail is definitely attacking me. I guess I guess that's just how I want to hold it is by the tail and it's 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 spiky. Ow. Yeah. I'm kind of trying to hold it by one of the front paws and one of the backs. Yeah. And also kind of the tail. Kind of. Yeah. I'm 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 not going to say it that way cuz that sounds like a horrible euphemism. I am holding it between my uh thumb and pointer finger where the goat area is. That seems to be giving me a good balance. Got point. it. If that helps. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Because the back legs do not have claws, so no. that is also helpful. Nope. The goat is softer than the other parts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the goat is definitely softer than the dragon. The mm -hmm. the hair is is definitely. I'd rather I'd rather be uh, holding it by the hair than holding it by the the scales. Yeah. Uh, Hermes4939 says, I started with the Reaper mini set and paint, which includes a lot of instructions, which was great. A lot of painting over my mistakes, mm -hmm. which is, that's one of the nice things about mini painting is yeah. if you do a whoopsie, you just paint over it. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or you take the Bob Ross approach of there are no whoopsies, only uh, they're all happy accidents. But sometimes, sometimes it's an accident where you're like, well, it's fine, but it's not what I wanted. And it's mm -hmm. perfectly fine to just paint over it. I've, I've had to do that a couple times. Yeah. You can always strip your mini down. However, there is one mini I will tell you to never ever strip. And that is the first mini you ever painted. Don't leave that mini alone because what happens is, is as you progress and do more painting of miniatures, you can go back to that first mini as your reference and see how far you have come along. Aww. So that is the only I mini that. I will say never, ever strip, never, ever strip your first painted mini. Keep that one as is. You'll, you'll be glad you did later on down the line. Even if you might see like the nuances that you wish you did a little bit differently, buy the same mini, try it again, but keep that mini itself. That's a really good idea. Buy the same mini, like, yeah. cause that's, and then being able to compare the two mm -hmm. and, and feel good about how far you've come and yet not lose out on that first mini yeah. that you've painted. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. It's the little things. Okay. <laughs> Um, and, um, and, um, I don't think it's a fainting goat. I don't, I don't it's think if this is, goat. Look at that yeah, face. I, I think if you're going to, if you're going to be the kind of goat that ends up in a, in a chimera with a dragon and a lion, that would be a weird chimera of like, Hey, we just, we just have to startle it enough. <laughs> so the goat part faints <laughs> and then, and then it'll be really easy to take care of. I always wonder, like, if I, this was my thought process. My first thought was, like, I wonder if the three heads get along or if they fight a lot. Mm. And then that led me to think, like, I want to see an all monster version of, like, the Golden Girls. <gasps> okay. <laughs> I am here for this idea. Yes. I think we already know who would join us for that show. We already have. Oh, Helen. absolutely. Hi. Yes. Hi, Helen. Hello, Helen. I got a the, wand. <laughs> the other thing is, if if you're thinking about these two, these three heads fighting with right. each other, you have uh, two carnivores, and 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 a 
prey. So Ooh. I do wonder, oh, does the lion and the dragon, do they gang up on the goat? Do they fight over who gets to go after the goat? Is that weird? Do they argue? <laughs> do the lion and the dragon team up to argue against the goat simply because they can intimidate it? Like the goats definitely try to de-escalate the situation each time. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Do we really have to fight these adventurers or can't we just talk? <laughs> We're having a discussion about who's going to get the goat. <laughs> who's going to get the goat? Maybe that's why the goat looks the way it does right now. It's like, they're coming to get me! <laughs> right? I didn't ask to be in this situation! <laughs> I need an adult. I need an adult. You're an adult. Oh my god. That I... was... Okay, so you could do the Chimera. You could do an Etten um mm. a hydra because then you can mm -hmm. really get to, like the multi-headed because wouldn't it be funny if like the different heads had different friends from the other monsters too yeah but maybe didn't get along with one of the other heads yep exactly oh yeah They'll just yep that would be i told you not to invite steve yeah but like <laughs> but we really like fred <laughs> <laughs> we can't invite them both they're just going to argue oh my god okay this could be a whole a whole campaign in and of itself yes there are a lot of monsters that are multi-headed monsters. There are. Especially the ones that are drawn from Greek mythology. Mm. There's, there's, you know, the ones you mentioned, the there's scene. Cerberus. Mm -hmm. yep. There's, there's just a ton of them. You just do a whole high school reunion full of all the multi-headed. <laughs> oh okay. dear. That would be a riot. That would be funny. Okay. So <laughs> let's see if chat remembers the various multi-headed monsters in D&D. So we have a chimera. We have mentioned the mm. uh, Etten and a Hydra and the severus mm -hmm. let's see who, what let's else see we who got else chat up. come on chat strong mighty python vibes yes yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely you've seen absolutely of course there's tiamat and, oh, yes. and tia what and yes i, I understand I tia, everyone's would, tiamat I, I would love to see tia what in action to be perfectly honest well so you can so uh if you play there's a Wild Beyond the Witchlight Adventure mm -hmm. that came out a couple of weeks ago that the champions are overcome with the basically poisonous spores and they start to hallucinate. And the creatures that they see as they're continuing to battle through this adventure are warped versions of creatures. And a lot of them include stuff from the sketching hour, mm -hmm. uh, includes like the Nebula Zorn pigs and stuff like that. And uh, for Nora and those at home who don't know what we're talking about, the sketching hour is where uh, me and two of the Idol Champions artists basically roll on some rolling tables and come up with creatures based on what we rolled. So that's why all of the names of the creatures are like Nebula Zorn Pigs, because it's a monster, an adjective, and a cute animal. Gotcha. Nice. <laughs> and for the release of the Trials of Mount Tiamat, in the game, we did a version of Tiamat where it was just the body and the red head. And then we did the rolling for the other four heads and chat named her Tia what? <laughs> because it's, it's, that's pretty much everybody's response to it. Mm -hmm. And Tia what is the Tiamat that you fight in that one Wild Beyond the Witchlight adventure while everybody nice. is has has had a few too many spores it is super fun <laughs> amazing okay so i have my fronts and backs done on both wings so it kind of ends up looking like this nice um, yeah i just i just finished because getting under that one wing that's angled a bit lower on the, the goat enough. head side yeah it's hard yep okay. i think i just had to extend mine out a little bit yeah totally fair to play around a little bit um, but just a heads up, we're going to shift over soon to burnt red using the same brush. And we're going to keep working on the wings. Burnt red. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. Yeah. I was like, dark, where is that one? The darkest yeah. red. And again, when you open up these paint pots, very, very carefully. Yes. Okay, let's see here. I always do this game of like, how thick is it? In so this is actually... Mine is swishing around quite well. You can see it's moving. Oh yeah. Beautifully. That's um, mine. So I'm not gonna need to thin mine from the looks of it. Which means I'm gonna put it right here. Actually, I feel like it's right there. I'm gonna pull as much as I can from the lid. 
Mm. Mine, on the other hand, is a mm. bit thick. So I think I am also, I'm going to spin. Mine. It's, oh, yeah. Is it like toothpaste? It's it's thicker maple syrup. It's it's mm. just it's ketchup? a bit. Ah, uh, yeah, th but thick ketchup. Thick ketchup. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't go so far as to say toothpaste, but it is it's mm. thicker than I want it yeah. to be. So <laughs> mine is actually pretty thin. So okay, so you probably nice got it some. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take this burnt red and bring this from the bottom of the wings up into the midpoint and sort of feather between the two colors. And this will start giving the wings a more worn out look. So it starts off as a more bright, vibrant red at the top of the wings. And then as you get to the edges of the wings, it gives it a darker tone. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we've also been reminded of uh, two headed creatures. I would mentioned Cerberus, but also death dogs mm -hmm. oh, uh, like Mugen. Mugen, exactly. Uh, a lot of people mentioned et, et, Ettens. Um, uh, there's two-headed ogres. Mm -hmm. um, Martin Serge says, "Does a Medusa count?" I mean, each serpent head tends to be an oversight, but eh, I maybe. I wondered, like, do those heads talk to each other when she's sleeping? <sighs> I played, uh, it was in a different TTRPG, uh -huh. but I played this Medusa-like character and she was a lead singer in a band and all the snakes on her head were her backup singers. Stop. Oh, nice. <laughs> so okay. they would, uh, yeah, we had like a little concert and all the, uh, all the snakes kind of like rattle <laughs> when they were singing. <laughs> okay, that's adorable. <laughs> I love that concept. That's fun. Oh yeah. And then in that case, they're, they're definitely having discussions about, okay, well, what key do we really want to sing this in? Because you know, the last time we went too high <laughs> yeah. and that's just, that's just uncomfortable. Somebody says, stop, stop. Somebody's pitchy. <laughs> <laughs> All snakes argue. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is great. I'm here for it. Some good character concepts. Just uh, talking about multi-headed creatures. Who would have thunk? Yeah. Right. Well, I'm always here for bards as well. Yes. But that's just me. Quite fair. Bards are fun. They are fun. So I specifically of bards, yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say we have we have a uh, Nahara. Yeah, who is a multi-class. She's mostly undead warlock, mm -hmm. but she's got um a few levels of College of the Spirit Bard, which was a new um for Van Richten's guide was a new college. Mm -hmm. And I was in love with that one because they get to basically be like a fortune teller. Yeah. They get to work with Taroka decks and, and um, the planchette and spirit board. And they get to do really cool. They get to have seances when they level up after a certain amount. And it's just uh, from a storytelling perspective, super fun. Mm -hmm. So when you were making Nahara, did you have any intention to multi-class or was it one of those things? You started off with a warlock and then you saw this bard college. Um, I I wanted to uh, multi-class her into something. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I saw, as soon as I read that, I was like, yes, this is exactly what I want. Um, because uh, especially since Beetle and Grimms had put out that um that box the van richten's guide to ravenloft box and it has the planchette mm -hmm. and it has all this cool stuff in it. and it's like i need i i love my props and games yeah so needed to have that in there mm -hmm. there's something very evocative in especially a a horror type game of a very serious game for you know those moments where you pull out the crystal ball and you actually have it there in your hand or when you're working with the Taroka deck or, you know, any of the, the props that you get to do. I, I feel like in those serious type games, a, a few props really helps a lot. And I'm not usually a prop person. Yeah. Yeah, that totally. And I um, just even from just a visual from an audience standpoint, just to have that representation, like when you're not quite sure what somebody's talking about, and then they like take out the holy symbol of Ravenkind, and it's mm -hmm. and you get to see what it looks like. Yeah, it just adds a little bit more excitement to me, at least. 
Yeah. And plus your Taroka deck is eerie. So spooky. Oh my God. The, my favorite thing it's gone from, from, for those who don't know, I've, I've talked about it a couple of times, but, um, it's gone from me having to like, just shuffling and pulling out a card and they've been so accurate. And so I was like, well, I want people to know that this is like in real time, they're seeing this. So I, it's, it's, evolved from that into me, like holding up the, the Taroka deck away from my face, shuffling it and have some, somebody else say to stop. stop. Yep. And even then it's been spot on each time. And it's yeah. my favorite is seeing everybody's facial reactions, um, especially B Dave and Mark's because mm-hmm. <laughs> there have been some really spooky ones. Yeah. It, it's been a canny. <laughs> I love now when you ask to uh, pull, and even before you even get to the pull, everyone's like, okay, here we go. Here we go. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a preparation moment on screen yes. and, and in chat. Everyone's like, okay, everyone put here we drinks. Go. Yep. Yep. Just well, let's get ready because this is going to be spooky. Yeah, I love it. It's been one of the most fun part uh, aspects um, about playing Nahara. I think it's amazing. And it's one of the things you can uh, unlock in the game mm-hmm. is a Taroka. Oh, I was thrilled when you said that's one of the things you wanted for the equipment. I'm like, yes, please. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what my one wing looks like with the two feathered together. So you can see it kind of gives it less of that bright red clean look. And I'm going to flip over and nice. do the same thing to the underside. And if you want to, I'm leaving this up to everyone. You can try and feather a little bit down into the lion's hide. Or you can just use, there is a clear demarcation where the dragon ends. It's up to you how far you want to carry that red in. Yeah, I'm still working on getting the feathering to actually be a, a smooth transition instead of just, here's where one red ends and yeah. here's where another begins. It Same. helps if your brush is a little bit drier. Uh... You can use the tip of your brush and drag from the bottom up into the upper portion. I see. It'll kind of act as a way to streak the paints together. Cool, cool, cool. You're definitely going to be able to see which wing I did first and which wing I did second. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) It's the process. Exactly. All right. This is that's that's like what we were talking about. Don't paint over your your first Mm -hmm. mini. You know, don't worry about painting over your first wing. This just to be like, this is the first wing I did. Yep. Yeah. You could also reverse engineer it and take the dark vermilion once everything's dry, Nora, and pull it from the top of the wing over the dark. Mm, Okay. Nice. To go back and fix. Okay, this is going to be fun because I'm already fighting with the goat. Trying to get this bit of the wing and the goat's head keeps popping in. This is also why I want to do the red first so that if any little bits of red get elsewhere, it'll be easier to cover it up. Um, the goat's like, I didn't even ask to be here. Yes, right? <laughs> I didn't want to be in this group. Nobody asked me. <laughs> I mean, or maybe maybe the goat is all about that color and is just looking for a new um, a new fashion statement. It's goat just like, why, why can't I be red? Right. Why can't I be a red goat? Drab. Yeah. Drab gray. Um, you think you're the boss of red? <laughs> Why do I got to blend in with everything? Right? I want to stand out. I want to be fashionable. I want to be pretty too. Um, <laughs> so there. How are we doing with questions? Come to think of it. We've been, oh, yeah. we've been very chatty. <laughs> we have been, but that's been fun. It's always fun. Um, yeah. just it. Ooh, Commander Meerkat wants to know, what is a mini you want to paint that doesn't exist? Oh. Oh. Oh, my. Or I guess um, for Nora and and I, since I, I mean, V might have an encyclopedic knowledge of all of the minis that are available. I don't know, but. I do not. Yeah, neither do I. But so uh, you might want to answer, and I'll do it too. What paint, what mini do you want to paint that you haven't had a chance to yet? That's a good idea. Oh, hmm. I'm itching to do a big dragon. We did the green one, mm-hmm. um, which was, that was a young adult, which was not small. No, <laughs> That was, you know, f- four episodes and a lot of work and it yeah. came out really well, but yeah. And 
I know I keep talking about doing the, the Tia mats and Tia mat might be a bit much, but I do, I am looking forward to doing a big dragon, you know, an, a, a full on ancient dragon paint. That's just going to take a while, but then I'm going to have a giant mini. I'm not I mean, really concerned about the color. Tia mats like probably like my, my end goal paints are really good Tia mat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tia mats fun to paint. I enjoyed that. That was a fun one to do. Um, I'm still I'm still eyeing that uh, unpainted Tia mat mini uh, mi mini quote unquote the maxi. Let's say if that's a yeah. that's a maxi at this point. Exactly, it is the literally one that... my inseam for its wingspan. <laughs> so <laughs> the one that I'm going to eventually pick up, and uh, me and my partner are just going to spend an entire year painting. Uh, you know, it's just. Some, sometime in 2023, that'll be our goal is we're going to paint this Tiamat or when we can uh, have a couple people come over for a nice long mini painting day and, you know, all right, you take the red head and you take the blue head, you take, because I am assuming, and this is an assumption on my part, mm -hmm. you can take those heads off and paint them and put them back on. I oh, no, to be honest, I haven't seen the breakdown of how that mini is set up. Okay. Um, then I might be making an assumption. But it would be a wise approach to it if that is the case. Yeah. Absolutely. And Nora, how about you? What mini what mini are you craving to paint? I don't know. I think Tiamat's definitely not in like I think I need way more practice before I attempt to do something like that. Um I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I kind of like I kind of want to do something where I could paint like a squad of of a, a certain monster. Mm -hmm. Ooh! But we did we did do the skeleton speed paint where we did two in one go. And uh, V, I think I remember you talking about how that that was also a good yeah. way to do like a squad of them. Oh, so absolutely. that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I want to do like a horde of something. Oh, fun. Yeah, horde of zombies. Yeah, it's fun, fun doing um, a whole grouping of them, but then doing something to each one to give it enough of an individual characteristic. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I've done Yanti that um, it's one of those things where um, each of the scale colors was different. So you were attacking the yellow Yanti, the green one, the orange one, the red one, and it just makes it so much easier when you're using it for table purposes. Um, so that that's always a little recommendation I'll pop in. If you're gonna do a grouping, try and make them look a little bit different from each other. <laughs> uh, and then we had um, Rovina asks, "What is the scariest chimera ever introduced, and in which book, movie, or game?" Mm. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if I'm that well versed in chimera appearances to answer that one. To be honest. I am not, but I will mention one of my favorite things out of the uh, mythic, Ode mythic Odysseys of Theros book that came out a while mm -hmm. ago is that there's an entire bit of build your own chimera. Oh, yeah. With a whole bunch of different heads mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of different power options. And I used that in a in a one shot and it was it was ridiculous fun to build a, chim a chimera from scratch, as yeah. it were, because especially even even players, D and D players who are new to the game, I think most people have an idea of the basic this chimera, right. uh, the one that we've got. So it's kind of exciting to throw a creature at them that they're familiar with, but not this kind. Mm -hmm. You know, be like, mm -hmm. yes, you were expecting a chimera, but one of them has a shark head. Dun -dun. <gasps> I'm here for shark head chimera. Right. Could it be a whole bunch of shark heads and they're different types of sharks? Yes. <gasps> I want to see and the hammerhead in the center, like doing this. Yes. <laughs> I was just thinking. Yep. <laughs> and each of them have different um, powers because you, when you do the build your own chimera, some of them you can give like breath weapons or powers to. So you could have three different sharks doing three different things. Some of which have nothing to do with being under the, under the ocean because why not? Yeah. Because oh, magic. Nice. I, I have literally, this is not a lie, I have dreamt of a shark dragon before. Ooh. Okay, and so that might be the mini for you. That <laughs> might be it. That might be the mini I want to paint, the shark dragon that doesn't exist yet. 
I say go. It just on. lives in your mind. Yep. One of these days. One of these days. That's what 3D printers are for. Mm -hmm. And people who design minis for 3D printers. Bless those people. Oh my goodness. They are such a help sometimes. Especially when you think of a creature that doesn't exist yet and you're like, I really want to have it on the table. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you help? <laughs> and they do. And it's appreciated. And sometimes in in what can sound like the most boring of ways, they're super helpful. Because uh, I have a friend who has a 3D printer and he's got a giant collection of minis and terrain and all of that. And on a regular basis, he'll print something out, not because he needs a different mini or a different type of terrain, but just, I want this mini in a different pose. Mm -hmm. I want to be able Ooh. to have this piece of terrain, but I want, you know, the doorway to be smaller or squatter or whatever. Yeah. And it's really nice. That's he so really cool. enjoys. Yeah, yeah right. Just some, to have that kind of control. Yeah. Really cool customizations come up with 3D printing. And if you get to know the programs and how to set everything up to create your um, STLs, it's awesome. I personally exactly. don't have the knack for doing the file stuff, but I know people who do, and I have nothing but admiration for them. Because in my in my book, that is artistry. If you can create 100%. this beautiful figure using the computer programming and have it print out, I I am always yeah, uh, always 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 yeah. Then let me paint it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that's when uh, it's two different artists working together, mm -hmm. each in their medium, and that's that is the joy of a, a game like D and D. Is it brings together all the different oh, yeah. types of art. Yeah, mm -hmm. really does. How have I forgotten all of the underclaws? How? I, don't know. <laughs> I wasn't trying to not paint them, but all of them are just like Any not idea. whole big white swaths. <laughs> what did I do wrong? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Maverick 2 wants to know, do our chimeras currently have names? I have not thought of a name quite yet, to be honest. It has been a week. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we have three different names or do we How's have one question? name do they each i, I kind of want to give each of the heads a name See, i want to give them like old school like female names like mm -hmm. uh mavis oh, <laughs> i love that <laughs> mavis and like beatrice maybe call her b for short mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I'm here for this. This is probably from going back to my Golden Girls theme, but maybe but they're getting, maybe great. they're getting. Mavis is definitely one of them. I think Mavis is probably the goat. Uh-huh. Mavis. Mavis. <laughs> See, well, I feel like if I'm going to go with three different names, I want to be that obnoxious person who all of the names are, they like begin with the same letter. Uh -huh. You know, those families who are like, oh yeah, you know, it, Lucas and Laura and Lonnie. I'm, yeah, I'm from one of those families. <laughs> Why would you all name us with the same letter? We're not attached to the hip. Oh, oh. I'm oh. not even kidding. I'm a set of V's. Cousins are a set of L's and M's. Um, and shoot, I think there was another one floating around that's slipping my mind. Oh, J's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, um... SLM493 says, hey, Martin, <laughs> can you let Lauren know? There's a GameSpot article about the gargantuan Tiamat Mini. Shows the heads are one piece, but the wings and the tail need attached. Okay. There Which I think go. is the same that as is the exact pre painted. same as the pre painted. So then the heads do not come apart. Yes. That makes sense. Yeah. It does make sense, but it's kind of sad because I, I do really like the idea of just like, all right, here's so the blue and yep. here's the green. <laughs> Um, Kevin Bulware asks about the CNE offices being closed today. Not closed, but the vast majority of our Canadian comrades are enjoying a day off because it is Canadian Day. Um, the same, the opposite will happen on Monday, as most of us who are Americans will have off for the 4th of July, while the Canadians will be back, back yep. in town. Um, but I wouldn't say the offices are closed because there's, there's always people floating around and, you know, like with, with any live services game, there's always a couple people who mm -hmm. are around to keep an eye on things. So, yeah. so we try, but yes, our, our Canadian friends. Yeah. We're yeah. Quieter. That's why there was no griddle champions this morning. Yeah. That's why there won't be paint and slay on Monday because you know, holidays. 
Paint, you mean, um, not paint and slave on Monday. Weekly patronage? Weekly patronage, yeah. Did I actually say paint <laughs> yeah, and slave? You said paint and slave. No, no, hold on. I'm, <laughs> guess what I'm focused on right now? I know, right? Painting. Surprise. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eosign, I think they are suggesting names for yeah, our. Let's hear them. Um, and, and now I have to pronounce them. Here we go. Okay. Sharagon, S H A R G O N, mm -hmm. or Durarak, which I think is them trying to like combine three names into one, like instead of Sharon, Shelley, and another S name. Uh huh. I think that's what we're going with. I might have also pronounced that wrong. I, I reserve the right to have. They're all missed. named Ashley, but they're spelled different. Please. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be too much. Oh yeah. This is Ashley with a Y. This is Ashley with an I, and this is Ashley I E. I E G H. <laughs> and we can tell when you've got the wrong one. When you're uh -huh. saying the wrong one, we can absolutely tell. It's all about the inflection. <laughs> when did our chim chimeras become valley girls? I don't know. I don't know. Like, oh my god. I totally I can totally hear that you're not pronouncing my name right. <sighs> That's not how it's supposed to be. I only ended up with a small amount of red all over my fingers. I'm I okay mean, with that. That's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. There you go. This is why I take lunch after the show so that I can spend a lot of time, like you were talking about, uh, washing my hands. Yeah. Uh -huh. Definitely. A little warm water and some good frothy soap. That does the trick for me. Although here's the funny thing. I, my nails refuse to have nail polish, like even gel nail polish, it will be gone within a week. Like the oh, stuff that's supposed to last three wow. weeks. No, my nails just refuse it. However, I have put miniature paint on my nails and that stuff has stayed on. <laughs> I remember you saying that. Yeah. And I'm like, I should just do my nails with mini paints. Hey, whatever works. Right. right? They're right. non-toxic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a They're water based. I have gotten these $45 manicures and they're gone within two days. And I'm just goofing around one night. I'm like, oh, this is a pretty color. Do, do, do. And three days later, it's still there. <laughs> now, have you ever done the opposite where you used nail polish on a mini before? I have. And I did it on this lovely little angel-like uh, figure. I forget who the maker was or what the model was. Um, but I was trying to give it this sort of um, air elemental-esque feel to it. Mm -hmm. one of my druids and i used a variety of blue nail polishes that i got from the dollar tree Ooh. and blended those together and it gave this really cool ethereal effect because they all sort of had like this um iridescent one was almost hollow like the hollow sheer uh -huh. shimmer like a holographic yeah, kind of yeah yeah so that was kind nice. of neat blending of i gotta tell you the makeup file is really good for mini painting there is stuff there that comes in quite handy, uh, like the nail detail brushes. Yes. Those are actually great because the stuff that does the little dots, those are really good for doing patterns on your miniatures, as well as for getting those pupils that everyone always cringes about. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Eyes. Oh, that'd be yeah. amazing. Yeah. So just FYI, if you're moseying down the makeup aisle, mm. grab yourself one of those nail brush kits, not nail polish, but nail brushes. Mm. Uh, I will say that, like, say for for this mm -hmm. little part that came off um, before, or one time I should say, I did use uh, UV builder gel under a UV Ooh. light, and it dries because it, it dries in mm -hmm. like a minute. Yeah, under the light, and uh, it was really helpful. Nice. I didn't even think that's of that cool. That gels. I like that. Well, idea. We have. Oh, absolutely. It's just more suggestions of like, hey, you don't have to just buy the mm -hmm. the brushes that talk about being mini painting brushes. You don't mm -hmm. have to just use the paint. Use use what you think will be fun, will be yeah. cool, will look nice. Yeah. Uh, and cool. now I have name suggestions for everybody. Oh. Um, we had Supply and Genemesis were both suggesting versions of Vex and Vax. Mm -hmm. So like Vex, Vax, and Vox or Vix. Um, Sailnet says that my wife is from a family with all J names. So apparently this is more common than I think. <laughs> um, Maverick 2 suggests for the Tiamat and wanting to take the heads off, the Dremels are available. Oh, no, do not Dremel that miniature. <laughs> oh, dear God. 
Um, oh, and the lurking writer has clarified the the Shargon or the Dar Ark is a, a shark plus a dragon. So. Shark dragon. Oh, there <laughs> we go. Shark dragon. Okay. The shark dragon. And hi, TTRP gifts. Hey. How you doing? Oh, hello. As I as I rush through all the things. Oh, and Manic Clown wanted a, uh, yeah, they're talking about the air, they're talking about airbrushes and then specifically the nail brushes from the the nail kits mm -hmm. that you can get at like a CVS or a Rite yeah, Aid or something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one of them. That is from a nail brush kit. That's cool. Yeah. I literally have it right on my hand. <laughs> but it's good for right. very fine um, dry brushing when you want to get very high delicate details because it's such a light paintbrush bristle hmm. I, I think yeah, i've at, done it yeah i think i've gotten it there so yep. my my camera is not going to be the best for this because it it's yeah. it doesn't have the multi-focus but i just want to rinse my brush off but you can see on my camera here yeah yeah yep and these are just base colors so there's, beg your pardon, sorry, for some reason there's a random phone call coming in. I uh, don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but hey. Uh, nope, nope, you're good. Awesome. So yeah, this is the base for the wings. And now we're going to move on to uh, the tail. Again, we're going to be working in reds today because um, okay. red is always fun and feisty. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Agreed. So let's switch over to, well, First of all, always rinse your brushes between when you're not going to be using them back and forth, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to jump over to the multi-purpose brush okay. from the WizKids kit. Take take this part off. I know that might seem an odd thing to say, but take this part off. You can keep it in a separate spot if you want to, to put it back over your brush ahead of time. But you can see this is a smaller round brush than what we've been previously using. And we're going to go in with the tail. Or we're going to go back to dark vermilion, which is sort of that ruby red color. Oh, let me actually close this up before I forget. Speaking of paints, close your paints. Uh, we're going to go back to the dark vermilion. I still have a good amount left from thinning it. And with the dark vermilion, we are going to do, do, do. We're going to do, do, do. We're going to do, do, do. We're going to basically yep. on this main part here. So not the vertical scales here that are on the underside of the tail and not the fin up here. Okay. So the center. Yeah. So the center portion, um, we are going to bring this down where basically all of the scales are here. Okay. So trisecting this, I don't know if it's a bisection because you know, it's three parts, but going to, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm going to hold this sort of, <laughs> the lion's head and doing my best not to hold the tail. Oh, geez. Yeah. Not holding the tail is going to be, yeah, that's the new challenge. Yeah. It will help to work from the base at the body and then work your way down because you're naturally going to want to steeple your pinky against the tail for stability. So better to have that as unpainted area and then work your way. And it looks like the those bottom fins that you were talking about, they fade out about halfway down the tail, right? Yeah, it starts to get a little absorbed when you get to, there's actually a, right there. There's sort of a last mark right there. Yeah. So then you can bring, mm -hmm. that's where you'd have the, the, the vermilion go through it completely. Oh, it just happened. We just yeah, had our, our first, all three of us. It's as soon as you start picking up smaller brushes. It's true. It's, this is that lovely so moment focus. of hyper-focus. Exactly. Although we do have new people coming in from the game. So hi, yeah. if you're just joining Hello. us. As you can see, we have a guest with us. We have Nora, who Hi. is here painting a chimera with us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and we also have Martin in the chat grabbing questions. So if you do have a question about the game or about chimeras or about um, the, the latest champion from the Black Dice Society, you can go hey. ahead and put those in chat. 
and be. Martin will be grabbing those. And we're also still soliciting names for these creatures, whether we're doing one name for the whole creature or uh, one for each head. I kind of want to go for each head. I, that just tickles me to no end. <laughs> it really does. I'm I also like my to be highly open. irreverent with naming my miniatures. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a Cthulhu-esque miniature I named Sushi because of the tentacles. Ooh. <laughs> All right. All right, Tail. So this is going to be one of those moments where we have to gently uh, move Tail in order to get at places. Yeah. Or at least for me, right? Because pivot Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. All right. We're just going to we're just going to do that. There you go. Excuse Don't break me, on me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Yeah, when I first pulled this out of the package, the tail was actually wrapped around the mm -hmm. back of that leg. Yeah. Which I thought looked cool, but then it got in the way of where the base is going to attach to. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I was a little worried about that, but. Yeah, that's definitely where. Um, yeah, I'm getting are... to the underside of this yeah. now where I'm like, hey. There are times it helps to take the mini out ahead of time because um, sometimes when they get put in their blisters, the blisters hug them a little too tightly. Mm. And I have found that taking them out of their blisters a day or two before you want to paint gives the plastic a chance to relax a little bit and ease back open if needed. Oh. Or going back to hair dryers, just do a low heat blast on your mini. And sometimes the memory of the plastic will kick back in. You'll see it unfurl itself and then quickly put it underneath cold water to set it. Is another trick you can do if something looks a little misshapen from the packaging. Wow. I would have never thought of that. Yep. You can also just dip it directly in hot water, but you have to be careful because sometimes that can pull up the primer. Okay. And when you dip Maybe. it, when you do that dipping in the hot water, yeah. when you say dip, is it like down up or are there several it's like seconds? A, I do a 10 count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 up. You can tell I have done okay. this often uh, for, hmm. for me to have a cadence to the count. There you go. If you want to do it, just go back, clip that, <laughs> and use me as your timer. <laughs> Put it on your phone. Yep. Now it's getting the other side of that tail. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's yeah. That's the challenge. I'm also playing the move around the camera, also paint around the wing, and I'm, I feel like I am a chimera. <laughs> yeah. Get in between the legs just to get the other side of the tail. Yeah. Why, why you gotta be so curled in on yourself? Yeah. It's why, tense. Why, it's why tense. You, gotta... <laughs> you gotta relax. <laughs> it's yeah. the goat part kicking into gear. <laughs> it's feeling protective. Must protect myself. I'm always on edge lately. Mm -hmm. Oh, darling, you need to relax so that I can get at all of your elbows and, and knees and all the, the, all the hard to reach places. Oh, just run into too many paladins lately. <laughs> oh. I don't know why this is now the voice of my. I kind of like it though. My chimera named a little Mavis. bossy clutch group. They get together and they do their gossiping, and you just think it's yeah, me, but it's actually these nine different voices kind of floating around. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Oh my gosh! It's the book club. <laughs> We get together monthly. <laughs> it's always awkward when we leave are... because we all leave in the same direction. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> y'all are attached. How does that work? Uh -huh. Oh my God. All right, I think I've managed to do this. I've also managed to boop the snoot of the lion with my red. That's, that's <laughs> why we are painting the lion you know? later. <laughs> you gotta love those snoot ooh, boots. Ooh, okay, mm -hmm. I think I might have found like a nice little pinch your move to kind of get this to open up a little bit. Nice. So I've sort of wedged the front lion against my pointer and I'm using my middle finger on the back goat leg so I can anchor and then pull with the tail with my thumb and my ring finger. Oh yeah. And it's helping me get in here a little bit more easily. I will remember that move for when we go after the scales because right? yeah, that's that's going to be another part that's going to be a little difficult to go after. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Also, hi, Cypher of Tear. Welcome. Uh, so, hello. Friends, friends of the show Yay. coming on in for our second half. Hello, hello. I'd look um, up and say hello, but I'm focusing on this freaking tail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're in an awkward position at the moment. Literally. A little bit. <laughs> Um, and Miki Murasao asks, can you make a DD and d Idol Champions Presents character where V, Lauren, and Nora each play a head? <gasps> yes. <laughs> I love that they're specifically asking for an Idol Champions Presents. So the next time that, that B God. Dave is going to put he together, to <laughs> you know, his Avengers crew, yes. the three of us are going to play one character. <laughs> I love it. Drive him batty in process. Uh -huh. We'll get the art to show on the screen and mm -hmm. then the three of us can just voice it we, we won't even have to be on screen i kind of like yeah. that idea that's a that's a different type of game than uh than Traditional, some of the games yeah. that are run i mean um idol champions presents always has a a fair bit of levity and ridiculous to yeah. to them um but then they also get kind of serious and world ending so no big deal yeah that's why I love any one shot is that you can just be goofy and it doesn't matter. Your backstory is not going to be addressed mm -hmm. <laughs> ever. You just go in and, and do the thing and you can be as obnoxious as you want. That's why I usually like something. running. Yeah. Running uh, silly one shots. Mm -hmm. I've run yeah. a couple of serious one shots and it's worked mostly because the players have actually asked for it or they've asked for something very specific where it's like, yeah, we can do this, but this is not going to be a, a, a silly game. We're going to have to go straight with it. Yeah. Yeah. And those have been great, but they're, they're rare. One shots. You're, you're right. Silly is way better. I think it also helps alleviate that. Um, especially if like, it's is the first time everyone's sitting down at the table to play together. Mm. It alleviates Very that true. newness tension to the group. Mm -hmm. Okay, really? Come on. I say that as I'm, uh, after this, I'm going to be getting ready to run a one-shot myself. So, yeah, tell us yeah. about it. I don't know if TTRP Gifts is still in the chat, but if they are, so um, they're organizing a big event that's happening over this weekend. I'm I'm frantically grabbing the title so that I make sure I get this all correct because I've got like 12 things in my head right, right. now. Where, where it is, there we go. So uh, we're doing a role for NNAF, uh, raising money for the National Network of Abortion Funds. Today, tomorrow, and Sunday, whole bunches of oats of games, D&D um, &D in both Spanish and English, Masks, Bluebeard's Bride, Thirsty Sword Lesbians, Brindlewood Bay, Pancake Art, and more. Uh, and I'm going to be running a D and D one shot tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific for a whole crew of awesome people. Um, and yes, we will be playing a silly one shot. I fully expect all of them to break the world and be ridiculous. And I'm I'm here for it. Amazing, love it. Yes, please and thank you. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, they're so, going to be playing level 12, so I'm I'm giving them some powers to play with. That's a nice, comfortable, like you get to do some cool stuff, but you're not so overwhelmed and have to like, yeah. you know, your each round of battle doesn't take 20 minutes. <laughs> <Right>. Exactly. <laughs> and and it's a two hour one shot. So if oh, we do so get yeah. into a fight, if if they decide to battle something instead of talk with something, we can get through it before the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And this was this is a crew of people who they've, they've all got D&D &D experience. So throwing a level 12 character at them to make was not uh because yeah sometimes you do end up with newer people or people who haven't done a stream before and so having a lesser a level five character a level three character is sometimes a little more comfortable but yeah. these are old pros they got it oh yeah that's that's fine nice. to be able to do that way okay i like playing the like lower level is for when i usually start experimenting with playing with a different race class than i'm usually mm. accustomed to yeah that's a good idea okay unlike the first time i played a chronomancer at level 20. Ooh, boy, that was <laughs> wow. like oh that was a that was a good challenge it was a challenge i was gonna say i'm done and then i turned the tail over and i realized i missed a spot <laughs> v welcome to my world i know right? <laughs> now i get there too it's just i was literally about to say okay now that we're done it was like 
no, mm. no, we're not. Now, now, I think, I think. Okay, I think I, I think, think I, got I got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to go for a new color. We're going to grab orange. No, stand up on your own two feet or four feet. However many feet you have. That, that's a very long name of a, a color. Orange, <laughs> no, stand up on your own two feet. I mean, ooh. We're going to grab the all. orange brown. And this is what's going to go on to the fin and on the underside of the tail where you have those bits of uh, scales. Open. There we go. So open carefully. And hopefully. We, oh, mine's nice and mixed and super thin. Ooh, okay. Note to self. Be careful. Um... So mine is very thin. I'm not even gonna have to thin that one out at all. So I'm gonna go back in with a multi-purpose yeah. purpose, the multi purpose brush, um, and paint up here, and also the fin. If you want to move to the other brush, the oh, see, I just found another spot uh, to the details brush. I think it's when I put this down and it tipped over that it nicked the tail. Oh yeah, I think is what happened there. Um, so you can use either the multi-purpose brush or the fine detail brush. All right. Which are you I might, most comfortable with? I might switch to the detail brush on the bottom of the tail. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. But for the top, this one seems to be there you go. working just fine. Awesome. So you're going to paint this into the underside of the tail. And now the challenge is getting the spikes and not missing part of them, because I'm pretty sure that's how I missed the the claws on the end of the wings oh. was just forgetting to to actually go over and poke at the spikes. So. Right. If it helps, you don't have to get precious about the spikes themselves. You want to aim for the thin. Oh God, things I say with mini painting, the thin flesh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every week, every week. Every it's like, it, week. It is just like playing D and D every every time. Wait, why am I saying this? Mm -hmm. What have I just said? This like I I well, it's a thing now. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know if it was a thing before, right? but thin flesh yep. is yeah. now a thing. I mean, even for creatures that we have some basis in reality for name for names of, there's always going to be those these moments of well, wait, what what do you what? call that again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why we often joke about the number of elbows and knees and armpits. Yeah. You're going to want to get into those gill holes. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just get nice in those little gill holes. The gill holes. <laughs> and, then, and then we have to get fun and euphemistic about, you know, the, the posterior. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the great slide and its great divide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the race, sorry, the red slad and its great divide, I should say. I oh, that's right. Time. Yep. Who can forget? How am I going to? Mm, mm -hmm. This is going to be a fun thing to say out loud. And that's every monster. That's every yes. single creature we we run into that. The spider, especially. Oh, Lord. Uh, the big spider was fun. So, yeah, it's just. It's just a, a constant joyful struggle. What what are we gonna say? What are we gonna call this today? It's also because you you're fully aware. Hi, this is being live stream, and there's this thing called getting a clip on Twitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You're like, oh god, this is gonna be there for a while potentially. Hey, ah, yep. Well, Gill holes will now live yes, forever. Yes, they they will. But hey, it's descriptive, right? Yep. Yeah. Come we know exactly that. what you're talking about. So, all right. All right, I'm gonna some I'm gonna try the V maneuver here to get at the other side of this tail. I am ah. in this. This is oh. not the time for my contact lens to go blurry. Oh shit! Oh, no. <laughs> Did it start spinning on you? <laughs> I, hate when I was just taking a moment before this to stretch, so <laughs> I, I totally get that. You gotta take that moment. I do. I'm probably gonna have to go out from under camera. Sorry, folks, but um, painting and camera are not playing together right now. They're getting mad. <laughs> I'm just gonna end up with brown on my finger, and I'm okay with this. Yep. It bullshits. Oh yeah, I'm I'm past that point. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a, a better Zen portion of the the paint than I am, though. Then because I'm race. still I'm still trying but failing miserably. Become the oh, paint. Geez. Embrace the paint. 
It's oh. just, it's the inside of this tail. It really is a, yeah. an extreme curvature. Mm -hmm. I think I just got the bottom part at least. Now I'm going to move on to the fin. All right, yeah, before I, I go back like in, that. I'm going to... Yeah, the lurking writer says, week number 30-something of asking for a phrasing emote. I mean, <laughs> I mean, do we need an emote to call us out like that, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, fair. people are talking about the, the Chimera kit in the chat. Okay. Um, this is from the uh, Nos Noslers? Noslers. Nos Noslers. Noslers. Marvelous Noslers. Miniatures. Yeah, Noslers. I don't know why that is a hard name for me to say, but Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures, mm -hmm. uh, definitely check your friendly local game store to see if either they have them or can order them. Yes. Um, and yeah, the they are super fun. Yep. You can also uh, go to WizKids website, uh, wizkids.com, and I believe in their events section, they should have more details about the kits and where you can find them and even search for local stores in your area. Or check online too. Yeah. Um, if the, if a store isn't an option, because trust me, I get it. Uh, <laughs> when you're not exactly in a more urban area, sometimes the game stores are few and far between. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Tanya. So just saw the Nahar comic. Oh. It was posted today. You did a great job with that. That was a fun one. Did say fast I, times at Ravenloft High? I think it was something like that. I'm trying to remember it yeah. now. <laughs> that, that could be its own campaign <laughs> right there. That's where when you need the break from the, the horror version of the campaign, you're like, okay, yes. time, time for a silly. Oh, goodness. Strahd is the principal, like the <gasps> evil principal of your school. Okay, oh, I'm geez. liking this. So Strahd could be the principal. Yeah. Aslan mm -hmm. could be, what would Aslan be? I see Aslan is like the gym teacher. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is like the, oh God, Nick is like the art teacher who just like knows everything. <laughs> I like this, I like where this yeah. is going. Yeah. It was the summer to remember. Mm -hmm. See, for some reason, I now have Ferris Bueller in my head. Literally, like eight, any 80s like teen mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. It is a genre for sure. The Breakfast Club, the Barovia yeah. Club, Club. The Barovia Club. <laughs> All right, I think I've achieved finage. Oh my gosh. I, am I think I've finished finished the finage. Finish, all right, I think I'm, I think I'm also, I got a little up. smudge, I got a little smudge on one of the, the goat legs, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's why we're doing the goat legs after the tail is doomed. All right, so now I gotta do the... How did you do that? Oh, that's right, because the two of you started with the fin, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what I started with. Yeah. I started with the bottom. I Ah, there we nope, go. Nope, that's what I'm going to now. That's what I'm going to try to attack. Yeah. I'm also taking a second just to be sure that I haven't missed anything. And I sh I'm sure I have. Oh, I totally did. That's what I was like, <laughs> oh, look. Yep. Oh, just surprise. when I thought. That's, just when yep. I thought. It's almost like you want to say, I think I'm done. And then look really carefully because it just shows the pain is going to come out and get you. Those are also the moments where I remember, eventually, there will be a wash. There will. And everything <gasps> will be fixed. <laughs> yes, I totally forgot. Yes, and we get to, we'll get to mix our own washes, so that'll be fun. Nice. Yeah. Yay. And I'm definitely moving to a detail <laughs> yeah. brush for these, these bottom scaly thingies. Fair. Very fair. Oh, my goodness. The first I'm rule gonna... of Barovia Club is you don't talk about Barovia Club. Yep. Thanks, Amanamana. <laughs> I mean, it's appropriate. Set mine down to dry a little bit. Uh, Severind says, I would have thought Aslan would have been the history teacher <gasps> and Soth oh. would have been the gym teacher. Oh, that, oh you I know like what? That. Yes, I like that. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Soth is definitely the gym teacher. Mm -hmm. Here for that cannon. Or I'm terrified of that cannon. I mean, it depends. Am I playing in this game or I'm just watching this game? Because if I'm playing this game, I am now <laughs> terrified of, of Lord Soth as my gym teacher. Oh, 
boy, that ridge, you have to remember to get the top of the ridge of the fin too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that was the part where uh, missing out on the spikes mm -hmm. was also getting me because just missing the whole top of that ridge. Yep. Wings, wings just, I forget about the top of the wings. Yep, the edging. I forget that's a thing. thing. We're getting oh, there. We're getting too there. much. Soth for student counselor. I think in the if it was like ah. purely black dice society, I would maybe say that Granny <gasps> was uh Ooh. could be a, the counselor. Uh huh. Agree. For for that specific campaign, but uh, I would be terrified of having Soth as a student counselor. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> Do you have any problems? No, oh. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, or for a counselor, um, the the other character that um, that Mark played uh, for for Franz. Oh, Franz Franz Alhonen. That's mm, yeah. Like Franz oh, yeah. something. I couldn't remember. I mean, that that could be an interesting that counselor. That could be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He didn't seem all that bad. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh. No one in Barovia is all that bad. Mm hmm. At least I know. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to. The we're hardest part the interior of the tail next to the body for the scales. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. Ah! Uh, God brain for counselor. I just looked up and saw that in the chat. Oh, no. <laughs> Firen Zalhonen's day off. Oh, chat, we're all <gasps> in with this. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Hear me out. Bailoth is the head teacher. Even though he's not Peter. Oh, we're bringing Bailoth now, into this. Now, oh, now we're bringing in Bailoth. Okay, can I just throw out there as a suggestion? Of course. Yeah. Um, Stuart for class mascot. <gasps> yes. Yes. Oh, somebody yes. on Maverick too just asked who does Stuart play. Yeah, I think I think uh, <laughs> maybe the mascot. Oh my god, Chad is having fun with this one. I'm honestly <laughs> I'm, enjoying it. This is good. Stuart or um, uh, Tregrum. Tregrum could be an interesting. Yeah, Tregrum could be an injury. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Tregrum is the is the one that does like the student announcements in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, hello, I'll, I'll hail the God brain. So uh, for lunch today, we will be having, <laughs> there will be tater tots. There, there will be brisket. <laughs> oh my God. Tregram would betray us all. Totally. I think so. For brisket. Absolutely. For brisket, yes. Uh -huh. For much less. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am officially going to shift over to the detail brush as we work on the Dargan head. Yeah, I'll be there in a second. I'm I'm, yep. I'm poking the last little bit because Poke. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You got it? You good? You good? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, I'm, I'm at the point where the wash will fix it. Mm -hmm. So kind of the same thing that we just did on the tail, we're going to do that due to the head. Uh, so the fins will become that dark or, or the orange brown, same thing for the throat. We're gonna put the dark vermilion on sort of the main portion of the head. Uh, and then the, what do I put for the fins? Mm -mm. Which brush do you recommend for this uh, one? Definitely the detailed brush, Ooh. the fine detail one. We wanna move down. Dropped. I don't know, there's a funny little bristle thing happening. Hold on. <laughs> Cypher of tears in chat, like, damn it, now I want brisket. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that does yeah. sound good. Same. It's hot it's outside, happening. and yet. And, and yet. yet. Mm. And yet. Yep, 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 oh, yep. And now people in chat are also saying that the next time they watch Black Dice Society, they're going to have all of these alternate characters running through their heads. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Oh, OK, for for my benefit, mm -hmm. can you which color is going where on the dark so head I'm again? I'm going to put the dark vermilion on the neck, the back of the neck, mm -hmm. avoiding the fins, because that again is going to be that orange brown. Okay. Ah. Okay. And also avoiding the scaly. And also avoiding the scaly part of the throat. 
I ah, see. Okay, yes. cool. And so it's, yeah, so we're doing this same as the tail. Yeah. That makes, makes sense. Okay. okay. I need to go to a different detail brush because the one that I got in my kit had a weird cut on it and it's not. Oh no. That's fine. I have, I have plenty of little brushes I can work with. I recently had to take scissors to one of my tiny little brushes because it had one of those aberrant hairs that just goes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, what is the point of having a tiny little brush if it wants to be two brushes in one? And that's what was happening. It was splitting every single time I touched the miniature. I'm like, this is going to get old really fast. Oof. Uh, oh, I mean, the, the detail on this is exquisite and also There's detail so hard. <laughs> so hard. Yeah, there's a lot of detail happening here. Ooh, pokey, pokey. Oh, yes. And uh, the lurking writer suggests Amani as the song, Amani the songbird as the music teacher. I mean, that's that's just a lock. Yeah, <laughs> that totally makes sense. And I saw that. Um, Omega is going to be guesting on Black Dice Society. Yes. Next week. Omega is going to be playing. Uh, shoot. I can't remember the name. The name. It's a long one, too. Um, a character, which if you go to the Black Dice Society Twitter, you can see, see the full name yeah. of. Hold, please. <laughs> while I get that for you. Oh, I was I was trying to get people to go themselves and then um, follow the Black Dice Society Twitter. Oh, but... yes, but you also, yes, want to do that? Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Harkin, Harkin Lucas. Ah. What you feel call is uh, uh, DJ's character, Desmond, uh, was looking for. Mm. Now, V might be able to help with this because i am asking a question from um from court of the raven queen okay that or kira would know but have no context for is this the person that voronika told him how to go find oh god i'm trying to remember is i think yes i think that is the one <laughs> okay all right that so yes for, for yeah. those of you who've watched court of the raven queen with voronika shows up and convinces Desmond and Tatiana to, uh, to, to basically go along with things. Mm -hmm. There's a moment in where she, oh wait, is it Voronika or is it the Raven Queen who gives that information? Shoot. For, for how to find Hark and Lucas? Yeah. yeah. Hark and or Lucas, it was the body taker plant Nahara. Who oh, told, okay. yeah, who told uh, Desmond how to find Hark and there Lucas. So then, okay. Well, I'm trying to remember what happened with I'm sorry. I am. I, I don't, am doing so many like stream productions behind the scenes right now. Everything's blending. <laughs> no, We've I get it. We've also done it. like 50 episodes at yeah. this point. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh it's yeah. Fun. And I think now, now that I'm starting to remember, I think the Raven Queen didn't actually mention uh, who, but where to go for more answers. Yeah. Ah. Oh. I, okay. But I don't remember the where. So this might be related. This might not. But so hey, if all of you. If all you have watched has been Court of the Raven Queen, then you now know a little bit of lore for Black Dice Society. You can go yeah. on over and watch. Yeah. That was a fun moment, uh, both when Voronika showed up and then also just watching those two characters as, as basically a third character bystander where Lauren is having a moment of geeking out over Black Dice Society lore mm -hmm. and Orkira is just standing there very confused. Yep. <laughs> So that was fun. That oh god, and that was a B Dave thing. He she shot he shot me a message in our like side chat, and he goes, um, "You're gonna be Nika. Start talking." I'm like, "What?" He goes, mm -hmm. "Put your mic on. Start talking." I'm like, "What am I saying?" He goes, "Something like this." I'm like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> it was just one of those things. I'm like, "All right, we're going here today." But we love to see it. Yeah, <laughs> B Dave. B Dave will just be like, "Hey, I'm gonna shoot you a message. Yep. This is what's happening. This is what's happening." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surprise! Have fun. This is, this is a thing now. Yeah, it was. That fun was how um, chat, like react. Like, who is this voice? It's like go watch Black Dice Society. I'm checking out where you're I'm sorry, painting on the head. Too. No, that's okay because like I, I see you leaving. Sea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got yeah. it. Oh, the lurking writer. I have not heard the song that bardic inspiration 
created for Lord Soth. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a fun song. And it took uh poor Jason, it took him a while to be able to to sing it again because he he went hard on uh, it goes pretty high. And and then he he was a little under the weather for a while and so he he couldn't sing it for a little while, but I think I think maybe the next show he'll be back at it. But yeah, it's a it's a fun song. Nice. I'll definitely have to definitely have to hear it. Yes. That should be available on our YouTube. Uh, just the song. We usually clip those out and put those up on our YouTube so that people can enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then you can think about how terrifying Lord Soth is as he's getting run over by a train. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you extending that uh, Dark Vermilion onto the head at all? Is that what I'm seeing? Yep. So here I finished the one side. So it's sort of you bring it up the neck behind the fin uh -huh. on the side, and then you make this little hold on. You have red on red that doesn't help. I make see what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So like part of the Yeah. So gotcha. I will do a quick little pause so you can see how brought up between the horn and the fin on the top of the head. Okay. And then brought it down the nose and around the side. So eye sockets, cheekbones, size of the cheek, and then lower jaw, and doing the same on the other side. Okay. The reverse lipstick. Exactly. <laughs> and now I'm trying to paint around camera, see face, and not get wing. Be fun. Hold on. One moment, please. And hey, you can get have the, uh, uh, another 15 minutes before we have to stop for Gar Wars Guide to Everything. So if you do have more Idol Champions questions, I mean, you can ask them here, but Gar War probably has a guide for that or anything. So definitely stick around for Gar War. Mm -hmm. um, and then I believe his show tomorrow is specifically about the event but you know what i'm just gonna look that up real quick because i want to make sure i'm talking about the right thing that's fair because i am that person who the the stuff that i'm working on is like four weeks ahead of where we are oh so let me make sure i mean I, i've been dancing through 2023 let's put it that way i'm like where am yeah. i Okay, I'm not working on the other side. Uh, you know what? I don't have it easily. Uh, I'm sure Garwar is going to be talking about awesome things. Probably about the event. Probably about oh. Nahara. So definitely uh, watch and ask good questions. And enjoy, because he probably has a guide for that. There we go. Nice. I thought I had it at my fingertips, but I don't. Did That's you also awesome. get the red under the chin? Like this. Oh, cool. Okay. Which I'm, I'm working on the other side right now. So when I get that completed, I can show you. But I have a feeling what we'll do is we'll finish up as much of the dragon head today. And we might pick back up with it next week. And then start working with the other bits of the goat Sounds and the lion. Good. Which should go a little bit faster because, I'm sorry, the wings in and of themselves, those take time. So we're not worrying well, about are... wings next week. They're a major feature of this they creature, are. and so it's and worth taking cool. the time. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Because, yeah, we do only have about 10 minutes left, yep. so. Ideally, I'd like to get all the red paint work done today, but we'll see what happens. Just so we're not playing near wet red paint and suddenly things look very salmon. <laughs> Yeah, salmon is not necessarily a color you put on a creature that you want to be fearsome. No, not so no. much. Not so much. Salmon is just not a good color. I'm just going to say it. As, as someone whose skin tone is very close to salmon, it's just not a good color. <laughs> I once had a shirt that was given to me uh, for an event that was a salmon color. And I'm like, this is, this is the ugliest thing I have ever seen. It oh, is wow. just, oof. Every salmon is offended right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, are they though? Salmon are delicious. I let you. I let you paint my fin 
Fin, what did I call them? Fin holes? Gill holes? Gill holes. Gill holes. Gil holes. <laughs> and exactly. this is what you do? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to be driving now and you're going to hear me shout, you gill hole. <laughs> I, I'm okay with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I missed from earlier, Kayleth Marin says, Valentine would be the popular girl. Tatiana would be her best friend. Desmond would be the jock. Uriah would be the AV club general nerd. Oh. Fen would be the emo goth. But who would Nahara be? Class president. There you go. There you go. In this breakfast club of although uh, I don't... Black Dice Society Breakfast Club. Although I'm going to say just from I... I... Uh, I, I will let everybody else in the cast say who they think they are because I'm not going to, mm, that fair. might, uh, that's fair. That, that might get some, uh, I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah. That is a fair assessment. I was about to say it was done and then I saw a spot I missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. Yep. It is that such game. a tiny head and yet is. there's a lot happening all right i think i have it all completed and i'm going to switch over to the orange brown again so that's what it looks like right now <laughs> okay yeah and i'm going to do the dark no i want to keep doing that the orange brown on the fin orange. and on the underside of the chin and the throat so once again just like the tail just like the tail yep and the horns are going to okay. be doing a different color on those. All right. Yeah, we can get that done in 10 minutes. No so. problem. <laughs> Absolutely not for fun. Um, yeah, um, I, I figured. <laughs> well, uh, for the black dice folks, we, we could let them say who they are. Yeah. They yeah. think they are. I just like the fan theories. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Not saying it's canon, but interesting to see how people associate everyone. Exactly. Nahara might be a cheerleader. We don't know. <laughs> I could see her being that super cheerful. Nika's just the emo girl who hangs out in the back and keeps quiet. <laughs> like, nope. That's fair. I... Hold on. Oh, Wing, why do you gotta be in the way of this fin? Oh, no. Oh no, oh. wings, no. No more winging it. Yeah. Because I don't want to get brown on the wings, but this this wing is so close to the head. Mm -hmm. And trying to get that fin without also getting the wing, that's a challenge. Can you, if you hold it upside down and away from you, would that help open up a spot for you? Maybe, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that next. Change the angle. Sometimes that opens up access that you don't realize is there. Yeah, I do spend a lot of time in this show doing a lot of this and just Spinning constantly it yeah. rotating. Yeah, you have same. To. When it comes to me, you absolutely have to. Okay, I think I got that. So let's let's go for the underside. Let's go for the neck. Mm -hmm. Surprised I missed a little bit of the red zone, which I will fix. No big deal. Get in the zone, the red zone? Yes. Oh, that is too much. That's nope, nope. I just have too much brown on my brush and it gets all gloppy. Nope. Then you can always take a clean brush and pull away if you need to. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. That should hopefully help. Oh, you can tell we're we're very yeah this is very intent now. Spot. Uh, but there is a question for Nora from Maverick Two. What was the last mini that you painted? Mm. Um, geez, Storm Giant. Ooh, very nice. I have not had enough time to paint minis lately. Life just gets that happens. Absolutely. Very chaotic. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that 
we can all, all of us who are mini painters for, for fun can relate to of, I've got minis in my closet that I know I'm going to paint someday. I just need the time. I have so many. And then I get to, I'll, I'll get in this like mode where I'm like, leave me alone. I'm doing nothing but painting minis mm -hmm. for like the next few weeks. And then, and then it tapers off again. I do the same. Yeah. All right, I think I'm good, which is good because this lion paw is digging into my thumb. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I had a good angle on it, so I didn't want to let go, but slowly my thumb was going ow, 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 ow. <laughs> uh, Kayla Marin says, that's the way I am with Lego sets. I have a backlog that just keeps getting bigger. That, that's fair though. I mean, Legos are not yeah. those creative. <laughs> and Cypher of Fear, I did not call you out. I have called us all out on the <laughs> collection of unpainted minis. This is true. Very true. We are all in this together. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, is that closed? That's a very good question. <laughs> Asking all the good questions. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm squeezing tight the orange brown because the last thing I want is to put all this away and then the open the drawer up next week and see everything is brown. Yeah, don't do that. Please I think I do that. I think I got it. Okay, good. Now, is that brown also going on the sides of yep, the? It's gonna go on the fins, the cheek fins. Cheek fins. There we oh, go. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was my. Good question. Thank you for asking because. Yep, I haven't gotten. I'm gonna pick my yet, brush back up. That was gonna be the next thing, and then when you're done with the fin, go to the cheeks. Also, Eosign uh, says, I've never painted a mini, but watching it happen is super relaxing. Thank it, you. Aww. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's good. It's one of the reasons that we do this on Friday afternoons, kind of a, a nice relaxing way to get into your weekend. Nice. I do find it very relaxing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Even when I'm sitting here complaining about the fact that I can't get at a specific angle of something, it's it's like fun. It's 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 that fun moment of ah oh there we go yep painting minis did get me through lockdown with some sanity mm. I mean many people have told me that to be honest even Mark my gosh Mark was on a roll in the beginning like it was a mini a week almost and big complicated ones too yeah. like I, right you'd post them and I'd be very impressed with just. Just everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Me too. I get you. Although I think this fine detail brush, I'm gonna need to take a scissor to because I'm I'm seeing an mm -hmm. errant a, an errant hair. Yeah, if you need to swap out for a different brush, that's totally understandable. Since yeah, I it. I definitely had to for yeah. mine. If we weren't at the end, mm -hmm. I would definitely, but it's it's gonna be okay for the next 30 seconds or so as I finish this fin. Yeah. But other than that, nope. I, I need to take the need to take the scissor to it. All right. It's kinda coming along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even with base colors, it's fun to see it taking on shape and color. Especially the wings, because they are such a giant part oh, yeah. of this creature. Yeah, very much so. Okay, so I'm just yeah. gonna tuck behind here. And then I think we're getting, we're getting to the good spot. Oof. Especially, I, I mean, when you place it on a table, it's what your eyes are drawn to first. Yeah, exactly. Okay, did I get all of it? Did I get it? Did I get it? Oh, and this is an excellent question from uh, Martin Z. Serge asks, mm -hmm. will Nora be here next week? I will be here next week because we need to finish painting our little babies. <laughs> our, our yet to be named babies need to be, <laughs> need to be finished. So yes, we are incredibly lucky. We're, we, we get our mm -hmm. guests for two weeks this time. Yay. I'm Yay. so excited for that. So yeah. yes, we will. Um, we're going to pick up and we're going to get base colors onto the lion and the goat. 
and then hopefully we can start getting some detail work going too to get uh, our chimeras pulled together. And then Rawr. worst case scenario, if we don't finish next week, because again, we don't want to rush if we don't have to rush, um, I will make sure Nora is taken care of with some notes, my little cheat sheets, if you will. Uh, she can also join us off camera for the uh, the next week after if we need it. So don't worry. If it's something we don't finish up next week, we will make sure to show you how to finish this miniature. That's basically exactly. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> we are we are trying to continue that this is a relaxing hobby. Mm -hmm. And so better to go nice and slow and just take another show yeah. or so. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we're going to have some fun with the not reds next week. <laughs> uh, is basically the way to put it for now. And we'll go back to the red for a little bit for some dry brushing and detail work, but it will be a little bit more controlled and less like get paint everywhere type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but until then, what else do we have uh, to keep in mind? Anything happening this weekend for either of you or anything like that? Um, I'm just house hunting this weekend, so good, Ooh, good luck. It. <laughs> good luck with that. Vibes for sure. Please, please send me all the I, positive I house will. hunting vibes. I will. I will send you all the positive house hunting vibes. Thank you. <laughs> That's why we just finished that process. Because good lord. Um, oh, and Lauren, we can see you later this evening, right, for the fundraiser. Yes. Perfect. On the uh, TTRP Gifts channel for uh, the one shot at six o'clock. Um, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I think that's the only place I'm appearing this weekend because I'm doing I'm doing some stuff on Saturday, but I can't talk about it. And then on uh, Monday, I plan on eating a hot dog and staying inside. <laughs> that okay. is my Fourth of July plans. <laughs> Calm. I'm gonna sleep in. I'm gonna have a hot dog. I'm here. I'm for just, I, I support your life decisions. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm here for that. I'm I'm looking forward to a calm Fourth of July. Uh, hope you have a lovely time house hunting and also get a, a calm and safe 4th of July, wh whatever you decide to do. Yeah. And a happy Canada, Canada Day to everyone who is celebrating today. And we'll all see you next week. And until then, take care. And Nora, thank you so much for joining us. And I can't wait to have thank you. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Definitely. Yay. Okay, everyone. Oh, and thank you, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Martin. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye, Bye. chat. Thank you.